All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Last time I left off with uh, this picture showing many different sectors of London that's been just demolished from the German fire raids. We're now on to here. This is the 29th of December, 1940. A Blitzkrieg city, uh, Blitzkrieg, no wait, a blitzed city backwater. Here is uh, Paternoster Square, as the Germans left it, on the summit of Old Bailey in the background. The figure of justice, blindfolded, holds her balance, an uplifted sword in the sight of the stricken city. Yeah, so here we see the city reduced to rubble, like much of the English cities. Um, at this time, what they would do to try to, you know, save kids and stuff, they would send them up into Scotland because it usually didn't get bombed. Um, or they would try to send them to Canada. That was usually a little bit more dangerous, though, because, you know, um, they'd have to go across the water and there's a chance that a submarine will uh, get to them first. Historic churches destroyed in London's heaviest raid of the war. December 29th, 1940. Making war on religion and beauty. Uh, the queerly named London churches, most of which had risen under the hand of Sir Christopher Wren um, from the ashes of the first great fire in 1666, suffered heavily in the second conflagration on of 1940. Above left, the interior of St. Breed's Fleet Street, the Church of Newspaperland, um, famous for its slender spire, one of Wren's masterpieces. Center, the ruins of St. Mary the Virgin, uh, Aldermanbury, where Shakespeare once habitually worshipped. Right? All Hallows, Barking, famous in all English-speaking lands as the headquarters of Talk H? Don't know what that is. In the background is the Crusader's Chapel with its destroyed altar. Below, left, all that was left of St. Gail's uh, Cripplegate. The burial place of Milton, John Fox, and Elizabethan Sailor. And the Elizabethan sailor. Martin Froscher, this church, like all hallows barking, survived the first great fire only to perish in the second. Center, the ruins of uh, Christchurch Grey Friars, Newgate Street, where the Blue Cot Boys of Christ's Hospital held their annual commemorative service. Right, charred debris with the batter walls of the Church of St. Andrews by the wardrobe. Other churches seriously damaged include St. Lawrence Jewry, the official church of the city corporation, S. Stevens, and Mary Woolnott. So here, in the top left is St. Breed's and as you can see, it has been, like all of these other ones that I will show you, reduced to absolute rubble. Very, very unfortunate. And then... In the middle here... Let's see, I'm just making sure... Yep, the ruins of St. Mary the Virgin. Like all of these, just unfortunate. The destruction to these historic places. Shakespeare once was here many times. To the right, there's All Hallows. And 
I mean, the damage is really bad here, but it doesn't look as bad as some of the other ones almost. It looks a little bit less destroyed. Um, bottom left. Um, oh, wait. Actually, this is all hollow. My bad. No, you know. Nope, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting it wrong again. Um, where, what is this one? Um, this is Martin, uh, this is St. Giles. This is what this is. This is St. Giles here. The foundations, though, think about this. A lot of these foundations survive, which... Well, a lot of it is destroyed. If the foundation survives, you can always rebuild. In the center here, we have... Um, this is Christchurch Greyfriars. And then lastly... Um, this is St. Andrews. And, yeah, this is St. Andrews, I believe. The 5th of January, 1941. British take Bardia. Yeah, British take Bardia. Um, the capture of Bardia was finally effected after the assault of less than four days. Yeah. 38,000 prisoners, including four generals and vast quantities of material, were taken with the town. Above, Australian troops advancing into Bardia. Below, Italian prisoners taken at Bardia, marching past Salome. So here we see up top is Australian troops advancing. Below here, we have those Italian troops heading to Salome after they've been captured. Um, yeah, the Australians, well, the Anzacs, I should say, they did a lot in North Africa, the Indian troops too as well, obviously. Um, they put up a, a great fight, showing that they had the tenacity that a lot of people maybe didn't think they did. But yeah, they had the tenacity to hold up in this war. And the prisoners of war, yeah, they would rather be prisoners because, well, they want to go home and see their family eventually. The no german raid takes their toll in Plymouth. And Portsmouth. January 10th to 13th, 1941. South Coastal Navy bases raided. Intense night air attacks were made on Portsmouth on January 10th and on Plymouth three days later. Churches, hospitals, and private dwellings were damaged in each case, and many persons rendered homeless. Left top, the remains of St. Andrew's, uh, Plymouth's, Mother Church. Bottom, weary firemen at Plymouth, after fighting the flames all night, run up the Union Jacks, the Union Jack, on a lamppost. Above the funeral of some of Portsmouth's victims, 25 bodies in a common grave. So there we see the ruins of St. Andrew, which we just saw, you know, a few minutes ago on a few pages before. And here's the, those firemen raising the Union Jack. Sure, it may only be on a lamppost, but they are going to raise the Union Jack so that people know the British colors still stand. And here is um, the funeral with all the Portsmouth victims in a mass grave. It's very unfortunate. The amount of civilian lives that are lost in this war are astronomical, and we haven't even gotten to the worst ones yet. Um, the uh, the British take a big hit, and that's not. To, I'm not trying to discredit them. 
Um, but we will see sooner rather than later the absolute devastation of um, the Soviet Union and its peoples. And we'll do this one last page right here of Albania. Progress of the war in Albania, October 1940 to January 1941. Albanian Campaign. The map above shows the direction of the early Italian thrust into uh, northern Greece, which reached its furthest south on November 9th. After crossing the Kalamas and farther east, striking at Metsovo, uh, through the Saradoro. San, Sar, oh my gosh. Sarandoporo. Valley, yeah. Here, the crack Italian um, Venizia Alpini were cut off and isolated by the Greeks, who then became the attackers. First, in the northeast, towards Corizza and um, Pogret, uh, Pogretes, Pogret, uh, you know what I said, you can read it. Then, in the center, towards Premiti and Kilsura, and finally along the coast in the direction of Senti Quaranta and Himaru, Himara, you know, Himara, yeah, Himara, Himara. Well, yeah, here's Albania, and so we see the black lines are the Italian thrusts. So we have this one, and this is where they stopped November 9th. You can see they didn't make it all that far. Um, yeah, from their starting point, they didn't really make it all that far. Um, and here we see this one, which also stopped on November 9th. This one made it quite a bit further east, but it's not really going to be very much of anything. And here we see another one that made it to Vizcarica. But here, then, here we see the um, Greek counterattacks. So we see one here and here. And they get all the way up to here by the 23rd of December. And they get up here by in the January 10th. Here's another January 10th. And, yeah, the Greeks just invade in Albania. So the Italian thrusts, they get completely, basically demolished as the Greeks just move in through Albania. And they make it all the way, they make it quite far. Comparatively. Compared to the Italians, they made it quite a bit farther into their enemy country. Alright, well that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I can improve on. As always, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Thank you.